Good day, Hollow Times listeners. We are honored to welcome back singer, songwriter, and author Kelly Lang. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Judy. Are we having a good day? I'm having a great day here in sunny Southern California. How about you back in Tennessee? Well, we woke up to lightning and thundering, and it was kind of crazy, but hopefully I'll have some pool time later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, the weather you guys have over there. <laughs> it's rock and roll. <laughs> Makes life exciting, right? <laughs> well, it sure shortens your, your night of sleep, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, we, we're very rare do we get thunder and lightning, but when we do, I actually love it because I don't have to live in it all the time, I guess. <laughs> right, right. It, it's, it's beautiful, but... We've seen so many close calls and houses and, you know, things hit by it. It's, it makes you a little bit more jumpy in the night, I will say. Oh, my goodness. Well, we always good thoughts for you up back there with the weather. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I am so excited, folks, to hear about Kelly's new album called Dragonfly being released this Friday, August 11th. How excited are you? It's just a whirlwind. I, I was I was expecting to put it out a little bit later, but it came together so quickly, and it was so much fun. And I thought, you know, why are we waiting? It, this is kind of a summer feeling album, and and I just felt the the song Dragonfly was was you know kind of evergreen. I figured, well, why not? Let's just go ahead and put it out. Well, let's talk about. Uh, there's twelve of them, I believe, on the on the album. Right. So let's talk briefly about each song, uh, whether you wrote the song, and if so, uh, where did the title and the inspiration come from? And for those, Yeah, and for those that are cover songs, why did you choose those for this album? You got it. So the first one is uh, Dragonfly. Well, Dragonfly is the actual title of the album, and for those who know me, you'll know that there's a weird phenomenon that happens when I do go into my swimming pool. I write a lot of my songs while I'm in the pool. And while I'm relaxing out there, the strangest thing happens. I can hold my fingers up and dragonflies will come land on me. And I, I've never heard of anybody else that does, that does that, you know. So it's always been something that's odd and it's a little spiritual feeling maybe. And so I thought dragonflies, people start sending me dragonfly things like the ornaments and pillows and coffee cups and all this stuff. So I have friends that even call me dragonfly. That's my nickname. And so, fast forward, I thought, wouldn't that be a cool name for the album? Well, that backed me into, well, are you going to write a song called Dragonfly? And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I go back out to the pool, and I start thinking, well, what could you possibly say about a dragonfly? And who could ever relate to a dragonfly? That is such a bizarre thing. But I started coming up with the melody and the words, and I recorded it. And the most strange thing happens men who hear this song are are they they said that not them not me i mean it's them saying it not me they say it's enchanting and mesmerizing and they can't stop listening to it and i thought okay that's an odd but good sign <laughs> i thought it was, sounded childlike to me and i thought it sounded very um you know like brings you back to your childhood like playing with the music box or something and and uh, i'm always amazed that men are attached to that song well, I have to say that <clears throat> the melody is beautiful with the right amount of musical instruments. It's such true words about a dragonfly. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, it's, it's, um, we're putting together a video now on it, and it's, it's really special. I, I'm anxious to share it with everyone. Oh, we can't wait for that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, number two, down in Destin. What, what yes. does that mean? Destin, Florida is my favorite beach on earth. Okay. It's the whitest sand you'll ever see. It's just childhood memories for me. I go back every year and, and it's just, you know, it's just a safe place in my heart. And um, I wrote this song 24 years ago. <clears throat> and I just decided to bring it back up to date and put it on this project. The sounds of this, uh, the song echoed a lot of the sounds of the other songs on here and to me Destin is heaven to me you know so I, I just this this album is not necessarily a gospel album it's it's things that make my heart swell mm. and perhaps somebody else hearing them can can have that same feeling as well 
Yeah, it's like a great song to sway back and forth to and think of being on the sands of our favorite beach. Uh, some tropical sound add relaxation to one's mind. Right, right. And it just, it just chills you out. It does, it does. <laughs> now, number three. Ooh, that was a, that one like touched the heart. Life Sentence. Oh, well, I think you and I have already talked about that yes, song. Yes, we have. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that song. Um, my friend Bruce Birch, who has recently passed, he heard me say that my breast cancer diagnosis was not my death sentence, but instead my life sentence. And by that, I mean I was able to push reset, you know, just restart my life again like a, like a computer would restart and look at things more appreciatively and I live bigger and bolder. I use the fine china. I use the good sheets now. And um, I, I just wanted to encourage other breast cancer patients. Uh, if you look at the video, breast, uh, the life sentence video, there's several breast cancer patients that sent in videos of them holding new ways that they're choosing to live their lives too now. Um, and then we dedicated the video and the song to Olivia Nick John, who obviously has just recently passed as well. Um, matter of fact, tomorrow is the anniversary of her, her passing. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> so that was just a really special song. And, and truthfully, that's what kicked off the idea for this album in the first place. Because when we released that last October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it, um, I realized that's needing to be attached to an album. Because when I perform it in concert, people ask, well, what album is that on? You know, so um, that sparked me needing to do an album of these types of songs, and then, so here we are. Yeah, because it's such an inspirational song for all those that have been told they have cancer or any other type of life-threatening diagnosis, you know? So the next one is one that the Hollywood Times is looking forward to, um, you know, being able to premiere it. Uh, You're a Miracle. Oh, I wrote that song for my daughter when she was four years old. And that song was originally on a lullaby project called Lullaby Country. And it ended up in Cracker Barrel for a very short time in the children's section. But to me, it's, it's evergreen. It's something you can say to a husband or a wife or a child or a newborn baby. or You know, it's kind of got the feel of, of universal love. And I just i am so proud of that song. And how it evolved, because the original cut of that was very bluegrass. And Mm -hmm. it's just one of these things that I I felt that it needed an orchestrated, more emotional feeling soundtrack to. And I'm hoping that you like that. I did. It was, it had such glorious music. And then, of course, add your angelic voice. Um, It's a song to last a lifetime, a dedication song for those that have had God's miracle in their life. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's it's a, it's, I guess you could say it's a song from God to mm-hmm. us, too. You know, mm-hmm. just, I think it's just a, a love song. It's just yeah. an evolving love song. Exactly. And who better to love? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh, the next one, If You Knew. Ooh, that was a touching one for me. Well, <sighs> well I was uh, working with Lori Morgan and her uh, piano player, Mark, and we were writing songs every week, and this particular song kind of came to be while we were writing that. So it's, it's an older song, um, but it's a powerful message. And some of the lines in this song is, You knew it was the last breath that you'd ever breathe, but you'd beg God for forgiveness while dropping to your knees if you knew. And it's all about, um, like, if, if you knew it was the last time you'd taste your mama's cooking or hear your grandmother repeat the same story over again, I bet you would do something different. And, you know, us as humans sometimes need that little little reminder or nudge to be patient with people. Right. The, the song will resonate with those who have lost a family member. We should be kind, be humble, show passion and forgiveness. God will grant you so much reward and love in your heart. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm struggling with um, a family member now that's, that's having some memory issues and I'm mm. I, I try to spark them. Don't you remember? Yeah, and then I think, oh, stop it, Kelly. Just let them be. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's a struggle. But um, this song is, is a human being song. It's a reminder to all of us that, you know, we're all going to go through these things and uh, just love each other. Be, be patient with one another. Yes. Ooh. 
Oh, the next one is I Think It's Jesus, which we spent a lot of time talking because that was your latest song that came out, but it's still, you still have to say a little bit about it. <laughs> uh, this is probably my favorite song I've ever written. Mm. It is, um, I, I'm a very spiritual person, Judy, and I see things in nature that speak to me, like, you know, like the dragonfly or red birds around me or I find pennies or feathers in weird places, and I think, is somebody telling me something, you know? Um, I, I get lumps in, on my, in my throat and chills on my arms and weird songs, you know, thinking, okay, what is that universal human thing that we all feel? All of us have coincidences that I don't think are coincidences, really. So I was just bold enough to name it, you know? So um, a, a lot of people are really resonating with this song. A lot of people feel that it is... Um, it was inspired, and I do believe that is the truth, and I'm just so proud of it. I, I just sense I get a lot of beautiful letters from people saying that they have been very moved by this, and, and uh, they pass it along to their friends, and it's just a thrill to see their song grow like it is. I know. I'm pretty sure I sent you a picture uh, on your Facebook. I was thinking of my dad a few weeks back, and I just yeah. happened to look outside, and I saw a bird with, I'm going to cry, with a red chest, and it just you know, just resonated that song, and I just had to go play it again because it's just so inspirational song. Thank you. And, you, you know, I'm hearing that from a lot of people, and, and it, again, it's just a reminder that we're all connected. We're all united. And if we could just stop the fighting and the, yeah. and the craziness in the world and just realize we've got way more in common with each other than we think we do. Exactly. So well said. So well said. Number seven, which was one of the songs I had at my dad's funeral who passed last year, Go Rest High on That Mountain, Vince Gill. Oh, I bet that was hard for you to listen to then. It was. I made me cry, but it was a good cry. You know, sometimes we need good cries, and it, and I thank you for that. I loved well, your version of it. My dearest friend, her name is Kim, <clears throat> um, her mother passed away, and she, she wanted me to sing at her mom's funeral, and so... I recorded both Amazing Grace and Go Rest High for her mom. And I just had them in my, you know, plethora of songs that, that I had set back. I never thought about releasing them, ever. You know, it never even crossed my mind to do an inspirational album. But they just they just matter to people. You know, those particular songs, uh, Go Rest High and, and specifically, moves me beyond, you know, and... and uh, I, I love Vince's version so much. I, I really didn't feel comfortable even touching his <laughs> at all. But, um, it, you know, it just, once I got it put down and, and was able to hear it back, uh, it's TG's favorite song on the album. So it, it was it was something I'm glad that I, I was able to put on there. Yeah, I, like I said, I truly loved your version. It's like every word spoken so beautifully. Thank you. I, I had a lot, of, a lot of feeling in that song. So I'm, I'm glad you felt that way. Yeah. Uh, next one, Down on My Knees. Down on My Knees, I wrote many, many, many years ago. Um, we decided to remake it and, and uh, <laughs> put it up. It, it's just a fun song. <laughs> I'm looking for an up-tempo song that would be inspirational. It's, it seems fun, but if you listen to the words, they're very deep. Mm -hmm. um, the Oak Ridge Boys and TG cut it on a duet project many, many years ago, and I love to hear all of their voices on it. Um, and my favorite line in that song is, thank you, God, for carpet on the floor, because you know that I'll be kneeling here some more. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the banjo sound, like bluegrass, you know? Oh, yeah. I love all genres of music, yes. you know? And, and this album, I, I think it really gives you a, a good sampling of what all I enjoy doing. Yes. Oh, my gosh. The next one, um, I'm Not Going Anywhere. We've talked about this song before. It was a national commercial using the song. Uh, you wrote a book, which we talked about that. Let's talk a little bit about the audio book of it. Oh, my goodness. That was such a chore. <laughs> I, I knew I needed to do an audio book, but I put it off as long as I possibly could because <laughs> it is a lot of work to sit there and reread the story that you have closed the chapter on. And it's a painful story, you know, mm -hmm. and it's but it's the success of a, of a person who was diagnosed with cancer. My, my music career was stopped dead in its track because of that. And 
the, the better part of that is not only do you go through the journey with me, but you come on the other side and see I'm 18 years out, you know? Yeah. So I, I was able to go back and relive and reread. And I actually was able to hear it from almost like a distant person reading the book. Like, like I, it wasn't really me reading it. It was a very strange phenomenon. Um, and I cried at the end of it because I, I now know how far I've come. And it, it was just a healing modality for me to go through. And I loved hearing TG's chapter two. Mm-hmm. You know, he was able to go in and read his version of his chapter. And I don't know, it just now it feels like there's a bow on that and it's tied and it's complete. And now I can move on. Yeah, it's like listening to it is like you're sitting here in the kitchen table with me. I could actually just see you sitting there reading it to me. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, I'm, thank you for saying that. That's a big compliment because I I didn't want the book to be, be preachy or, you know, I, this is how you have to do it kind of thing. I, I just simply am telling it from my perspective and from my heart. And, you know, people can take away from it what they what they will. But um, I did want it to be like girlfriends sitting around chatting about it, a story. No, yeah, you accomplished that. Yay. <laughs> Next one is looking down. Mm-hmm. I, wrote, I wrote that song many years ago, too. We, we redid it again. The, the message is um, about a little girl, and she's drawing a picture. And she's drawing a picture of her and her mom and her dad and, and the little dog um, and the swing set. And, you know, however, the little girl's perspective, she brings her mom into the kitchen and she says, Mommy, look what I drew. Here's me, and here's you, and here's our puppy, and there's Daddy in the sky looking down. And she's trying to encourage her mother that she knows the dad's watching over him. She sees her mom in pain. And then she prays to God later, and, and she's saying, God, I hope he's there. You know, like she's trying to assure her mom, but she's wanting assurance too. So it's, it's a painful song. You know, I'm sure mm-hmm. there's others that can, can relate to this. And, hey, even us as adults, I still feel like a little girl when it comes to my parents. Yeah, it hit me in my heart since I lost my dad last year, and I know he's looking down on me every day. Such it an emotional is, but a beautiful song. Well, thank you. It, it is. It's from a child's perspective, but aren't we all yeah. children? I'm. I'll always be a child. Right. <laughs> you right. know, that's what I love myself about. Love me about <laughs> being a child. Yeah, I'm, I'm childlike too. As a matter of <laughs> fact, the joke around our house is: I say I'm only five. You know, <laughs> leave me alone. I'm only five. <laughs> That's a good one. Way to be. <laughs> oh, and this next one. Oh, it's such a, an amazing song for no matter who sings it, but you just do an amazing job and with amazing grace. Well, again, I sang that for my friend's um, mother's funeral. Yes. And I almost didn't put it on the project. It was like the last decision uh, to do that. But she was like, Kelly, it will be more complete with that song on there. There's so many people that are comforted by that, and and they feel that, you know, that is like a staple. And if you've already got it cut, please just consider putting it on there. So I did with her mm-hmm. nudging, and I'm, I'm really glad I did because it, it's, it is it, it's just such a universal comfort. Yeah, and we know it will be played at many funerals to come, and your angelic voice brings the song, you know, much meaning. Well, thank you, Judy. You're welcome. And uh, the last one, it's amazing, Jesus, Jesus Loves Me. <laughs> mm. Well, what did you think about that? Uh, this, I have to say, the world needs this song today and always. So we all should spread it around and be proud to do so. There was an interesting reason why I added that song on the project. <clears throat> My friend, again, whose parents, or mom, mom passed away. She has two special needs children, mm-hmm. and one of them is blind and is non-vocal, cannot speak at all. He can just, you know, grunt a couple of words. Most recently, he had a stroke and was in the hospital, and they really felt that they were going to lose him. And he's just the sweetest, sweetest boy. His name is, is Brevin. His brother's name is Brock. But Brevin was deathly ill, and he was having seizures and stuff. And the only thing that would calm him down his dad called me and says, can you please sing Jesus Loves Me to him? Mm-hmm. I sang Jesus Loves Me, and he calmed down and was able to go to sleep. And he's now out of the hospital and doing great, doing much, much better. They, they really didn't think he would survive it. So I thought, I'm going to record Jesus Loves Me for them. That way they can always have it if he ever needs to be calmed down again. 
And my favorite Christian song is is um, I Surrender All. Mm-hmm. And I, that would be neat to mesh those two songs together. And um, so that's how that ended up on the project. Wow. Well, Kelly, you know you're an angel on earth. You know that, don't you? <laughs> don't tell TG. <laughs> He'll disagree with you. <laughs> Well, but I'll tell him in person one day. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. I, I don't feel angelic in any way. I just, you know what it is, Judy? I'm just really open to God speaking through me. Yeah. And I'm open to spiritual and natural necessarily things. <laughs> but I, I just, I'm not afraid to be bold and share my, my experiences. And, you know, perhaps that will encourage other people to do the same. Oh, we are going to definitely get the message out there. That's for sure. We're, we're so excited for this uh, album, truly. Well, I didn't expect you to be emotional with me today, but I'm, I'm really moved. I appreciate you being so open with me. Yeah, it's just, oh, I have my Kleenex. I knew I'd need it. <laughs> <laughs> and more well, of a inspirational <laughs> songs well, and movie. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, you know, when you first create a project and you, and you put it out, you don't really know. It's like showing your baby to the world for the first time, and are they going to like it or not? You know, it's it's very intimidating. And, um, you know, I've only had one other person have heard the project and, and uh, give me their feedback. So I'm, I'm glad it's you that, that is, is talking with me today because it's, it's a very vulnerable position. Yeah. Um, Kelly, will it be released on a CD or on an EP kind of thing? It will be released as a CD um, probably in a couple of months. Okay. Got it, got yeah. it. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to that, and, and a copy of that would be wonderful. <laughs> we'll make sure you get one for sure. <laughs> what else are you currently working on, Busy Woman? Tomorrow we go back into the studio and finalize a few few things. TG and I are doing a duet project that will be out in February. <gasps> oh, my gosh, how exciting is that? And so we're about halfway done with it, I guess. We've got all the tracks recorded, and we're just you know tweaking some vocals and uh, there's a lot more to heavy lifting to do to that project, but it, it's it's going well, and I just love singing with him, and, and uh, it, we're looking forward to being able to, we've, we've got a couple of things up our sleeve that we're going to be working on together this fall, and mm-hmm. uh, be able to announce all of that coming up very shortly. Cool, and we hope that you come out here to California, or, as, or even Laughlin, because that's not too far away, because we'd love to see you live. Oh, man. You know, we were talking about Laughlin yesterday. I, I would love to put something together. Last time I played there was with Mo Bandy and TG. Mm-hmm. And I uh, had great crowds. I, I really enjoy that room there. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I'll let you know ahead of time for sure. It sounds good. And we greatly appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and especially sharing everything about all of these 12 songs. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love Thank you, too. you. Hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah, you do the same. All right, my friend.